today I'm looking at the humble train as a champion of a greener future for us here in Ireland. And it's not what you might expect. It's not the commuter train or the intercity. It's the freight train. And I'm going to be asking whether this blast from the past could ever have a comeback. 20 years ago, well over 10% of our goods were transported by rail. This has now dropped to less than 1%. Waterford Port is now the only direct connection for rail freight to sea. I talked to Anthony Kelly. In the 70s, Duncan, the cargo that we had in this country probably suited uh, rail freight movements. And uh, then as we got more affluent in the 90s, there was a rush uh, to get delivery of goods as quickly as possible. Uh, rail freight, for one reason or another, lost out. The rail network didn't get the necessary funding to cope with the changes that were happening. I feel that we may be at a stage now where the pendulum is swinging back and uh, there's lots of advantages from an environmental, from a planning perspective that uh, rail freight does have a positive place in uh, the 21st century. We need the best possible transport for our goods because they represent the lifeblood of our economy. It keeps us competitive, economically active. But to that, we now need to add the word sustainable. And that's where things start to get complicated. Ireland's Kyoto limit was set at 13% above 1990 levels. Emissions from road freight have increased by 295% between 1990 and 2006. These emissions are projected to increase by a further 25% by 2020. That's five times what they were. Road freight is generally more flexible to business, but it needs to be reassessed to include all its hidden environmental and external costs to taxpayers and compared with rail freight. The real costs, when all the hidden factors are revealed, shows a positive case for rail freight making a comeback. I spoke to James Nix about this. So what sort of damage are heavy goods trucks doing to our roads? Compared to cars, um, trucks do about 10,000 times more damage, at least 10,000 times more damage to the roads. Road doesn't pay its true costs. Uh, for example, it doesn't pay the costs of all the accidents that occur from uh, vehicle crashes. Um, it doesn't pay the, the true, its true environmental costs. It doesn't pay for the, the carbon dioxide. It doesn't pay for the extra nitrous oxides. Um, it also doesn't pay for the noise. So all of these factors, economists refer to it as external costs. They're hidden costs. They're not factored in. We should factor them in. Um, with a carbon tax coming in, that'll begin to, fact, begin to factor them in. Rail freight is a very, very low-hanging fruit. We have all the rail lines there. We're not using them at night. We need to. We've invested well over half a billion to automate gates, take out manual level crossings. We've increased bridge heights on all our main lines, or most of our main lines where, where it was a problem. So all of that work has been done, all of that investment has gone in. It's a question of grasping it. Um, and it really, we, we need to act quite, quite swiftly on it, because otherwise we'll, we will miss an opportunity. Balancing all the costs of rail against road freight is something we are yet to do. I talked to economist Bernard Feeney about the size of this task. It is a complex question um, and uh, it, there is a balance, a trade-off to be made and I think the key is to seek out those instances in which the two things line up or at least there's an environmental benefit that outweighs any economic losses that might be involved in it. This issue hasn't been analysed in sufficient depth to enable us to have a definitive view as to the appropriate split. I certainly would welcome a situation in which that analysis took place and we had a clearer perspective on, if you like, the dimensions of the problem and appropriate policy that might be put in place. If we do facilitate and reinvest in rail freight, there are many benefits. I met with John Whelan of the Irish Exporters Association. John, how important is free transport for all our exporters in Ireland? Well, in and out of the country every year, Duncan, we take uh, several hundred thousand containers of goods the critically uh, necessary imports for to help our manufacturing industry and then of course the very important exports going out. Uh, they vary dramatically from uh, heavy bulk goods to uh, goods which are, uh, shall I say, light but take up a lot of space. To get the right balance, the efficient balance going through our cities, through to the ports and out to the markets, we do need a mix of uh, rail freight and road freight. We're uh, uh, right across Europe the only country reliant exclusively on ro road freight to get our goods to market and that is not good in the long haul. 
uh, for either the ports, for the cities or for exporters. So are exporters disadvantaged by not having a good rail freight service? Well, the, the, the problem we have with the lack of the rail freight is that, in fact, it's adding to an already congested situation. And while we're getting a little bit of a downturn, when we get the, the scenario back up, fuel prices up to the full uh, whack again, then the, the, the whole issue suddenly becomes very critical again. We need to be able to have alternative modes that don't use up quite so much fuel, that ease some of the congestion and keeps the ports moving nice and smoothly. You have to have a bit of a balance uh, between rail freight and road freight. That balance we killed off in 2005 right here behind us. Rail freight connection is one that could be used for certain industries, not for all industries, for certain industries. We believe that it still has a place, it still could critically keep manufacturing in certain sectors alive in Ireland and I think it needs to be re-looked at. The EU are very committed to uh, rail freight, uh, they will fund very significantly redevelopment of that area. Every full freight train takes 18 trucks off the road and the fuel consumption and CO2 emissions from lorries are five times higher than rail freight. Upgrading rail freight would give us a balanced and sophisticated logistics chain that could only help our industry and attract investment. With Europe already investing, we'd be left behind, competing with countries with leaner, greener infrastructure, whilst we simply ask for more EU derogations.